Hello, I'm Antti Autti, professional snowboarder and freerider from Rovaniemi, Finland. For the past decade I've been exploring a lot of terrain here in the Arctic Circle and during this time I've seen a huge potential for freeriding in this area. So, at the beginning of this year I started a new project called Arctic Lines. This is a web series that aims to show diverse opportunities for free riding while I'm trying to complete my personal bucket list of 30 lines. We partnered up with my sponsors Fatnap and Sunto for this project and today I'm here to show you and give you some inspiration on how to use their products and digital services for your next outdoor adventures. Fatnap is basically your digital guidebook for your adventures. In FatMap app, you can look at the terrain in 3D, plan routes and really get the idea of the RS you're interested of going to. You can connect your FatMap to Zoom to watch an app. By doing this, you can track your efforts and have your adventure on the go. This is amazing, because when you're out there in the nature, many things can happen and having a great GPS watch with you, with all the information about your route, is super handy. So with that said, let's start going through how I'm planning my adventures. First I look at the wider perspective of the area where I want to go. This is the key thing for route planning. Once you know how the area is, you can dive into more detailed locations and this way you can start planning your route. There's also a lot of cool terrain tools which can be very helpful when planning. I like to use winter and summer imagery, snow layers and especially the avalanche gradient. There's also a lot of nice explore membership features such as downloading your route to offline. Combining these tools with route planning is a great way to find more interesting terrain. For example, when I was planning my latest adventure to Käsivarsi Wilderness Area in Finland, I used these tools to find more specific terrain in the area that at first sight didn't look that interesting. But with FatMap I was able to locate a line in the south face of Ritni Mountain that looked like it had the potential and that ultimately made me to go there to see it in person. Okay, so let's start looking at how I'm planning a mission or a trip in Arctic Lines. First things first, I need to know where I'm going and where I'm gonna be organized and where are the safety spots and where are the closest towns and everything like that. So basically for Arctic Lines, most of the stuff that I'm doing is right at this area here. This is a small mountain area in Finland. Here is the Lyngen Alps and other coastal mountains of Norway and Swedish Lapland is here. Today we're looking at that small mountain area in Finland. We can go closer in here. There's a small lake here or actually not that small because you can see it here but uh, it looks very small. It's called Kilpisjärvi. There's a village called Kilpisjärvi there also, and uh, this is the closest town towards Käsivarsi Wilderness area, the only mountain area in Finland. And uh, in this area, there's a really nice looking line that I did, and I want to show you guys how I found it by using a fat map. So we're here in Kilpisjärvi, and this whole small mountain area right, right next to border of Norway is just here. So what I usually do with the fat map, I go in more, I find out, okay, now you can see that the gradient is starting to change a bit and the imagery is starting to change much more detailed when we go dive, dive deeper into the area. So by looking at it right now, it looks rather flat in my opinion there's not too many sharp peaks or huge mountains actually so it's hard to say like okay is there actually gonna be some good terrain here and um by looking at it like this i would maybe go like okay i'm done i'm, I'm gonna go search something else but if i click on the right side here and i go here we have the overlays here aspect distance gradient flats elevation and I like to use avalanche overlay because when I click avalanche overlay like this, we start seeing that, okay, there are some sections that are steeper that have the avalanche gradient. And looking at it, I'm like, okay, there's, a, there's some steeper sections here, but it looks like it's not the really continued 
section. It's just the one short section here that has some avi and then it mellows out. And I really want to find a steep line for this mission that I want to do. So I keep searching and then I see this here. This looks like okay. It's flat on the top, it's flat in the bottom, but in the middle it looks really steep. So I go deeper in, closer into the area. And I'm like, okay, this could potentially work. I look at it at 3D. I start looking at it more. And wow, this is amazing. It's flat on the top, as I said. It's steep all the way down. And it has perfect run out. But this doesn't give me enough information of whether I should try it or not. So I click the terrain overlays again and I take off the avalanche overlay. And wow, here we go. We can see it right now. Everything around here looks quite flat, but this face here looks spectacular. Even on this map, like even this graphic, you can see the features, you can see that there's a small rollover on the top, but it is very, very steep. And this is actually what really made me to go to this place called Ritnichokka, which is the highest mountain peak in Finland. This south-facing slope of Ritni. So how would I approach this line then? So the closest town, Kilpisjärvi is about 55 kilometers from this line. So I have two options. I walk there or I ski tour there. But in this case, the other option could be to get a transport near the line and set up a camp and hang out there. This looks like a good spot for a camping because it's high ground. You can scout the line, you can scout the surrounding areas as well. And you can just plan your day really nicely and the route. So in my case, I would plan a camp somewhere here and then start making a route on top of the mountain. So what I would do first is to put on the avalanche gradient again. And then here is create a route. Click, I click that, choose the activity type. And here we have ski touring and then draw a route. Click. All right, I will, I'm here. Oh, let's put back a little bit. And here is my camping point. This is where the route starts. I click that. And now I'm able to start creating the route. Quite flat area here. And then go around. I would be able to keep an eye on the face the whole time. And here, it's generally very flat. But here, I'm coming into this area that, okay, this is really steep, but it's more towards east and maybe southeast. So perhaps I can go around it a bit from around here and here. And this here creates a really cool way to understand that, okay, there is a small slope that's almost in the same aspect as the one that I want to ride. So I would maybe go on top of this slope and test the snow a bit. I could do a test run somewhere over here to see how the snow is reacting on steeper slope to build up for the bigger one. But here I could get to the top of the line. And of course now I would need to have some uh, really good information about the snow before dropping in. And if I would drop in, in this case, it looks very steep. It might actually collect some snow on the top. So there might be some hazards that you that I would need to deal with before dropping in. But ultimately, the line would go down somewhere here. And it would be very short way back to the camping point. But if this would feel like, OK, I don't want to do that. Is there an alternative route down? I can delete this a bit, go back. All right, I'm back here. So this is the ultimately the goal that we want to do. But if this doesn't seem good, what's the other option? I don't want to go down the same route I came up. I want to explore a bit more. I can go down here, 
we probably know how the snow is. Or I can go around and I can have a longer line here on the mellow aspect, which only has a super small avalanche gradient danger at the end, which we can probably deal with. And then I would go around and this would give us a really cool trip back to the camp. So this is a really nice way to work and plan the routes that you want to do. There's an always an ultimately a bigger goal in my project that I want to achieve every time I go out. But there has to be some other ways to do it as well. And basically what I usually do with FatMap and Suunto is to plan these routes the way that there's always an alternative option. And I usually draw a route around that because sometimes weather comes in or something might go wrong. So we need to know where we're going to go when we're out there. But once the route is fi finished, I can go to save and continue. And I will need to write a route title. And the route title says Ritney South Face. One line summary. Steep line in Finland. Really steep. <laughs> and difficult rating would be not easy. It would be extreme, I would say. It has some hazards there. And to do this, you could um, you need to write descriptions, highlights details about the area you can choose is it ski mountaineering or kular or face in this case it's a face you can also choose ski crates and everything and um, then get the directions so you can create this really good informative points and the route for persons who want to go there right now i'm still going to save it privately because this requires a little bit more job be done but I can show you from another route how I've done it <laughs> so now it's saved in privately I have a I have a location here and I have a plan what I want to do and this is an amazing spot so ultimately as I said finding this face through fat map made me to go there so it was a really great proof why I want to use a fat map to search new terrain So when I've created a route in uh, FatMap, I can uh, upload it to my Suunto app and my watch. And I can do it this way. I can push this extreme Oxahaket color route here. That's and here I can go down. And there's a send GPX to my Suunto device. And when I push this, I can put send and it sends straight into my Suunto app here. And then there it says show it on the watch. In Finnish it says käytä kellossa. But here it says show it on the watch. And then I just click it like this. And it starts synchronizing the routes for my watch. And I can go to navigation, click navigation, go to routes. There's one. Click. There's Oxahaket Kulor Climbed. I click that. And I'm ready to navigate and go. All right. So now the route is in your watch and you're pretty much ready to go. But I want to show a very important thing that I made on this route using my Sunda watch. And here you can find a point of interest. Difficult go around the steep part. This is something that um, would be really hard to do it by just drawing a route in FatMap because we can look at really cool big terrain, but when we're going to very detailed spots like going around the little hill and stuff like this, this could be a very difficult thing to know beforehand. But once you're at the location, you can... Uh, pinpoint these spots and that's what I did with my Suunto. So I made a point of interest around this little hill here which 
was really difficult to go up because it was very slippery and it's very steep actually. And um, so that's where I created this point of interest. This is very good information for people who want to maybe go and attempt this line the way we did it. I placed this point of interest into this route in FATMAP as well. This was a really cool way and I think this is really good for people who want to attempt stuff like this because if you're doing something that's uh, more technically difficult or something like this, the person who's doing this has a responsibility to create as accurate root description with all the details as possible. So I think that first you need to make a f you can make a fat map route, and then you can go for an adventure. And during this adventure, you need to have a soon the watch a GPS watch with you, where you can create these point of interests that are very important to be able to do this route safely and especially have a good time. So meaning saving a lot of energy and not to run around with the heart rate up in the high 180s the whole time. So this is a super important thing. So I would say that uh, combining Sundo with FatMap is a perfect tool to create safe and very fun adventures. So let's bring up the actual route so you can see how I was moving in the mission we did. I have plenty of them here if we go to my adventures. And in my adventures, we have to go all the way to December because that's when I was there. I believe it was December 11th. Here we go. And when I click this, you see on the route how I was traveling there. This is the tracking movement straight from my Sunda watch. <laughs> All right. And you can see it even clearer when you click this airplane mode and it turns in this route in the 3D and you can see how you were moving in the adventure. Check. Let's check it out. I also want to give out five soon to takeaways when using it together fat map. Planning on the go, navigating the route and altitude, marking point of interest, basing the efforts by keeping the track of the heart rate. This is not only for the professional athletes, it's a really important and good way to know how your energy levels are going. Saving your adventure to soon to app and uploading the exact route to fat map. So now it's time to sum up everything. FatMap is perfect tool to plan adventures and really look into some more specific terrain and routes. Connecting FatMap and Sundo will give you a perfect combination to stay on the track of your movements on the go. Thanks so much for checking this webinar and I wish everyone super fun adventures in the mountains.